So I've been testing out the new Chorus Dura for nearly three weeks now, using it for tons of outdoor riding, including plenty of navigation, as well as a bit of indoor riding as well. And uh, I've yet to plug it in to charge it, and it still has nearly half of the battery remaining. So the Dura is a pretty interesting new bike computer to hit the market for a few reasons. So first off, it's coming from Chorus, who's made a big name for themselves in the running world with their watches, but now they're expanding into the cycling world with this. But they didn't just copy paste from another bike computer either. This has some fresh ideas, including a huge solar panel, which helps it get really good battery life, but they also brought over their digital dial concept from their watches. And trust me, I've got lots of thoughts on if this dial concept that actually works on a bike computer. Now, even though I have been testing the Dura out for nearly three weeks now, I'm actually not calling this an in-depth review. And the reason for this is quite simply, the software isn't ready yet. In fact, the final software won't be ready for reviewers until after this announcement. The software has been a work in progress. Now, even though I'm not calling this a review, between you and me, this video is gonna be kind of review-y as I have been using it for long enough to form some solid opinions on things that won't change over time with software. So let's just go ahead and call this a really in-depth first impressions where I'll be giving you all the details on the hardware, what they're claiming for battery life, as well as some results from some of my initial tests. I also have some additional tests for GPS accuracy, and I'll be going over all the features that I have been able to test, as well as talk about their plans for features that'll be coming out later on down the road. And if you do find the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just hit that like button down below, and also subscribe to the channel for my final in-depth review that'll be dropping in about a week or two. Anyhow, with that, let's go ahead and get into what this Dura is all about. So when it comes to price, so the Dura is going to run $250, which is a fairly competitive price for the most part. And for comparison, the Wahoo Element Bolt V2 runs $279 currently, which is probably the closest competitor when it comes to features. And I'll definitely have an in-depth comparison between those two in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. So inside the box, you'll get the Dura itself, an out front mount, adapters for the mount for both 25.4 as well as 31.8 millimeter handlebars. There's Allen wrenches for the mount, a USB-C to USB-C charging cable, as well as manuals and of course a sticker. And the mount itself looks really good here and appears to be pretty sturdy. And they are using a standard quarter turn mount here. So you can go ahead and use any existing quarter turn mounts that you may have. And when the Dura is mounted, it has a nice clean arrow look to it. And the mount also does have a screw at the bottom in the case that you want to have more security or just leave it on your bike all the time. And in fact, that's something that they mentioned to me is that with the battery life that they're advertising, if you get enough solar exposure, in theory, you may never have to take it off to charge it with a cable. Again, more details of battery life here in just one bit. And then one more thing in regards to durability. So in speaking of course, they certainly have heard the stories of other mounts breaking from other manufacturers. So they are definitely aware of that happening with other computers. So that's what they had in mind with creating this mount. And actually, you know what? I think I actually have two of these mounts. So let's see here. <laughs> that's, that's robust. That's, that's not gonna go anywhere. So when it comes to size and weight, I think it's a good size that they chose here where it's a great size for road as well as gravel and it's probably small enough for most mountain biking as well. I do tend to prefer something probably a little bit shorter though when it comes to mountain biking just so the computer is out of the way and just less susceptible to getting damaged in a crash but it's probably fine for most mountain biking I think. And then for weight, the Dura itself comes in right around 97 grams and the mount is around 44 grams. And for comparison, the Garmin Edge 840 Solar weighs 89 grams but something like a Karoo 3 weighs 118 grams. For the display, the Dura has a 2.7 inch memory and pixel touchscreen display and being that it's a transflective memory and pixel display, it looks really good in direct sunlight and even great in the shade. Where it can be a little bit more challenging to see is when there's a little bit of glare like if you're going in and out of shade and in and out of clouds and it's also a little bit less visible at off angles but I think the overall visibility is pretty fantastic just like you get on watches with the same kind of display technology. So before we get into the actual interface and how you get around the device, one quick thing I wanted to mention is that you really don't have to turn this thing off. I actually haven't turned it off since I've had it. So if you're not using it, it just kind of just goes to sleep after a few minutes. And to start it back up, all you do is just tap on the back button here and it wakes up. And I have to say that coming from other bike computers, like let's say a Karoo 3, which can take upwards of like a minute to start up before I can get riding, I really do appreciate this near instant startup time. Anyhow, to get around the device, the Dura has a touchscreen along with two buttons, with one of those buttons being a digital dial. The lower button here is used to wake up the device as well as act as a back button, and then you'll use the touchscreen or the digital dial to move throughout the menus, and then you'll press the digital dial as an enter key. Now, if you watched any of my Chorus watch reviews, you probably know that I'm not necessarily a fan of a digital dial on a watch. I just feel that physical buttons that you push are easier with that sort of device. However, I actually quite like the dial on the Dura, and the reason for this is that I can just 
quickly flick the dial to change a data page, and I can even do this while writing at a pretty brisk pace. With a button that I have to push, it takes a little bit more accuracy, and with bike computers that have a button on the side, I typically have to sort of hold the bike computer on both sides to press one of those buttons. The other reason though comes to when you have gloves on, where depending on the size of the button on the bike computer, it may not be super obvious if I'm actually pressing the button itself. I can easily just flick the dial in the Dura with pretty much any size gloves on. So just like the digital dial on their watches, I think this is just gonna be a personal preference thing, but I personally kinda like how this works on a bike computer. Now one thing to note about the touchscreen as well as the digital dial though is that with both swipes as well as turns of the digital dial, they're both meant to be more of a swipe behavior and not really a smooth scroll behavior. So what I mean by this is that it's not really a fine tuned control per se like your phone. They're both meant to be like flicked I guess you could say where if you do try to use them as a precise control, it's not really quite the same behavior that you have on a phone. And then when it comes to ride profiles, you have the ability to have different ride profiles with different setups when it comes to data pages and data fields and you can have up to nine data fields per page and then up to five data pages, including the map page. There's a lot of data fields to choose from here, whether those are timers, distance, speed, power, heart rate, cadence. It's a good list of data fields that they have here. And then in addition, there's also some graphical data fields like heart rate and power, where on the right hand side, there's indicators for your zones. And then what I quite like about this is that on the data field itself, it has the color of the particular zone that you're in, but also kind of fills up that data field. So it's a very clear illustration of the particular piece of data. And then for the map page, if you're not using a route, it's a full screen map where you have a timer on the bottom, along with touch controls for zooming in and out of the map. Now, funny enough though, this is one area on their watches where I actually quite liked using the digital dial, where it was an intuitive way of zooming in and out of the map. But on the Dura, it's done with touch controls, which could actually be more challenging to do if you have gloves on. And then one more thing is that you can also switch to a split screen view where the map is on every data page and then you can scroll through the metrics which are displayed on the bottom portion of the display. Now, if you load in a route, the map page will then show the intended route that's in blue with directional arrows. It will also show the distance to the next turn. There's an elevation profile of the route ahead as well as the total distance remaining as well as your current speed. Now, there's not really any customization that you can do on the Dura itself for the data pages and data fields other than switching between a split screen view on the map where really all the customization is gonna be done through the app. So very much like a Wahoo computer. Now, one of the other unique things about the Dura other than the dial is this portion above the display, which is this unapologetic solar panel. Now, even though this does take up a good amount of space here and adds to the overall footprint or face print, I guess you could say, it works and it's not just delaying discharge like you can have on some other solar bike computers. In theory, you can actually recharge the device. So they advertise that it can get up to 120 hours of battery life using its all system satellite mode and then up to 70 hours in their higher accuracy dual frequency mode without any solar exposure. And they're also claiming that the Dura can actually get indefinite battery life with enough solar exposure where they say that for each hour that you're outside in at least 75,000 lux conditions, it could actually potentially add battery life to the device. Now this is one area where I'm waiting on final firmware, which they say is where I should see this unlimited battery life. And so far the best I've gotten is a one to one ratio where it basically didn't lose any battery life over a two and a half hour ride. And on that ride, I was using the all systems mode. I had a heart rate monitor paired as well as a power meter and barrier radar. And I was using a route with navigation. So really a more taxing use case there. And it also was a super sunny day. So I haven't necessarily seen the recharging to more than what I had before a ride, but even so, even right now, I mean, it's getting some ridiculously good battery life. And then it does also appear that you can recharge the Dura when you're not using it by just placing it in the sun in standby mode, where they say that it should be about the same expectation of an hour outside equaling two additional hours of ride time. And right now with the software version that I'm on, I'm getting about a 1% gain every hour that I have it outside. And I do live in Colorado where the sun is pretty strong most of the time. Again, plenty more testing with that in future releases. When it comes to mapping and navigation, the Dura has worldwide landscape and topo maps with images of streets, trails, as well as bodies of water to help give context to your location. Now, the maps that they have on the Dura are similar to the maps that they have on their watches where these are map images, meaning that they show all that information, but they aren't fully routable maps with information like actual street names, trail names, or specific points of interest like what you can see on a Garmin or Hammerhead Carew. So they are very helpful in giving you context to your location where you can see upcoming roads, trails, and other landmarks, but it won't have the on-device, on-demand routing like you can get on some of its competitors. And that gets us to navigation. So the Dura can provide turn-by-turn -turn directions when using a preloaded route from the app, and you can build a route directly in the course app itself. You can import a GPX file, you can use routes from Komoot, and you can also use routes from Strava, which can automatically sync over. And they also do have plans for ride GPS in the near future. 
And I find the navigation experience to be quite good so far, where the colors that they use for the intended route are very clear to see, and the directional arrows also help a ton. And along with the high contrast of the screen, it's basically easy to distinguish all the routing details. Now, even though the Dura doesn't have any on-device, on-demand routing, you can use the Chorus app to do a lot of these functions where you can just select a destination and then just push that to the Dura, even when you're already riding, which is really convenient. And then the same thing goes with other routes as well, where at any time you can just go and push a new route to the Dura to switch things up. And then the Dura also has a Climb Pro-like feature when you load a route where you can identify and break out different climb portions on a route, just so you can see how much suffering that you actually have ahead of you. And for it to be considered a climb section, it needs to be at least 500 meters long with an average slope of at least 3%. So when you get to the base of each climb, a pop-up will appear on the bottom indicating the start of the climb with the distance, elevation gain, as well as the average grade of the climb. And I think they did a really nice job of how this is implemented. And I think it's a nice interface where it's very clear to see the steepness of each section and the accuracy of the current grade seems to be pretty in line too, and also quite responsive to changes in grade. But one thing to note though, is that it doesn't have any automatic climb detection if you're not using a route since it doesn't have fully routable maps. But I have to say that the climb feature that I do have seems to work pretty well here. Now, since the Dura doesn't have fully routable maps, Chorus kind of had to do a little bit of a workaround here where they're gonna actually leverage Google Maps on your phone to do the rerouting. So if you do deviate from your route, you'll have two options to choose from where you can select back to route, which will attempt to get you back to your route in the fastest way possible. Or the other option is gonna be navigate to destination, which will attempt to reroute with the fastest way possible to get you to your end point of your route. And at the moment, the Dura will just kind of beep at you that you're off route and there's really no automatic reroute functionality that's happening, but they say that with a future software update, that should happen automatically. The caveat here though, is that you will have to have a cell phone signal since it's leveraging Google Maps. So that's something to consider if you plan on doing any adventures out in the middle of nowhere where you may not have a cell phone signal. You still can view the maps, of course, and use those in a more manual manner to try to get back on route. And they do provide a directional arrow as well as a line in the direction of your intended route, but the full turn-by-turn -turn rerouting requires a cell phone signal with the app. And when it comes to external sensors, yes, the Dura supports both Bluetooth as well as Ant Plus external sensors, unlike their current watches that only support Bluetooth sensors. And for those of you in the cycling world, you already know that Ant Plus sensors is kind of a must have when it comes to cycling since some sensors just work best over Ant Plus. But in terms of the kinds of sensors that it supports, you can pair up heart rate monitors, you can pair up cycling power meters, although at the moment it's just collecting single-sided power, but they do tell me that dual-sided power is coming in the future. It also connects to smart bike trainers, it connects to Vario radar and lights, and it connects to SRAM axis and Shimano electronic shifting, as well as to e-bikes. Oh, and then one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that it does have a very robust beeper on here, so it's definitely easy to hear stuff like Vario radar alerts. And then for some other kind of interesting features that the Dura has, so if you have a core watch. If you start an activity on the Dura, it will automatically look for your watch and then you can use your watch as an external sensor for stuff like heart rate. And then in addition, there's also a continuous sync feature where it's supposed to actually push data to the app during your activity constantly. So saving your activity is faster after you're done. But to be honest with you, I'm not really sure about the why behind this feature as I've never really had any complaints when it comes to like how long it takes to sync an activity after I'm done. But hey, I guess that's there if you need it. And then when it comes to safety and tracking, so the Dura has a live track feature where links can be sent to your emergency contacts when you start an activity where they can kind of follow along while you ride. And there's also a bike alarm feature where it'll start beeping if it detects any movement. So you could turn this on in the case where maybe you need to pop into a coffee shop or something like that and leave your bike computer on your bike. I personally just bring my bike computer in with me, but I guess it could be useful if you happen to use a screw on the bottom of the mount to keep your computer more permanently attached. And then the Dura is also gonna get a crash detection feature where it uses information from GPS as well as a gyroscope to try to detect a crash. So it's looking for stuff like decelerating really quickly, like coming to immediate stop or some kind of impact. And if it does detect something, it'll leverage your phone to send out an alert to an emergency contact. And then another feature that they're gonna have is the ability to use the Dura in conjunction with your compatible Chorus watch for a triathlon, where the Dura can act as an external display for the information that your watch is collecting. So how this will work is that when you transition from swim to bike, all you have to do is just hop on your bike, wake it up, and the Dura will display the data that's being collected on your watch. Again, something that wasn't quite there for me on the software version 
system that I was running, but should be available in the future. Now, when it comes to GPS accuracy, so they're gonna have three different modes to choose from here. So they're gonna have an all systems mode, a dual frequency mode, as well as an auto mode, where it's gonna automatically select the best satellite mode based on the quality of the satellite signal in an effort to save on battery life. And although I'm not running final software, I can already say that the GPS accuracy as well as altimeter accuracy seems to be perfectly fine here. And I've had zero issues on the numerous rides that I've had. Oh, and by the way, you may have noticed some crazy high training load numbers there. So the reason for this is that if you have a power meter paired with your Dura or your Chorus watch for that matter, it'll use power to calculate training load. If you don't use a power meter but are still using a chest strap, it'll use heart rate for training load. If you use neither, it won't calculate that at all since it doesn't have any meaningful exertion data. Anyhow, the reason for those crazy high training load numbers is that somewhere in the beta software cycle, the app automatically updated my FTP to something rather low, around the low 200s where my actual FTP is around 285. But after I manually updated it, it was good to go. So that's just something to look for if you're seeing some weird training load numbers. And then there's also some other features slated for the future, such as the ability to search for a point of interest directly on the Dura itself. There's also supposed to be media controls where you can control the music that's playing on your phone. There's supposed to be a group ride feature, which sounds pretty interesting. And then they also do have Strava live segments slated for around the fall. So as you can tell, there's a lot of features that should be there in the future, and it is definitely a work in progress, but I have to say that it is an interesting new device with a lot of fresh ideas. I can't necessarily give it a recommendation one way or the other at the moment until I get the final software, but I definitely want to hear about your thoughts of what you think about the Dura. Anyhow, if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor just quickly hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for my final in-depth review of the Dura that'll be coming out in about a week or so. In the meantime, go get out there, happy riding, and we will see you in the next video.